चलो एवरी वन ओवर नाउ लेट गो हेड एंड सी द नेक्स्ट चार्ट द नेक्स्ट चार्ट इन आर चैप्टर ऑफ एग्जामेशन इज अदर एग्जामेशन एवरी वन ओवर हियर Other exemptions may what I've gone ahead and done is whatever miscellaneous exemptions were there, whatever miscellaneous exemptions were there which were not covered in the other chart, I've gone ahead and covered over here. So let's go ahead and quickly see now. Everyone over here. Services by way of transfer of business as going concern. Everyone, if I go ahead and transfer my business to someone, then Baba, when I transfer my business to someone as going concern, he is going to go ahead and collect GST and give it to the government. So me transferring him business assets and liabilities, I'll transfer in that scenario GST will not. Come. The next one over here is service of basically renting of residential house. Baba, I gave my residential house. Supposingly, I went ahead and gave a residential house to anyone. Government is going ahead and telling residential house giving to anyone to stay. Basically, you are going ahead and giving home, food, clothing, and shelter is very important. And hence, there will be no GST. But then government went ahead and now thought, let's collect some money. And hence, government went ahead and told, if you are giving to a registered person, let the registered person pay the GST under RCM. Are we clear? He will pay GST under RCM and take input tax credit. Are we clear? So, supposingly my landlord went ahead and gave me my home for me to stay over there. And I am not a registered person. Will he charge me GST? No. If he went ahead and gave it to me and I am keeping all my employees over there or I am showing it as a business expense in my business, then I then will have to pay GST under RCM. Are we clear everyone? So, always remember one thing. Renting of residential house for residential purpose is always exempt. But if it is given to whom? Resident, residential dwelling is rented to a registered person, then registered person will pay GST under RCM. One mark question should be asked in the exam. Everyone over here now. Sir, the next one over here is services by coal mine provident fund. Baba, all this coal mine provident fund which is there. Employee state insurance corporation which is there. Then employee provident fund organization which is there. Their services are always exam but here earlier what used to happen rbi ka services services provided by rbi was also exempt that is no more ex under exemption and hence it is taxable sir services by securities exchange board of india was exempt now it is taxable gst will come sir insurance regulatory development authority when it used to give services to insurers sir it was exempt earlier now it is under gst gst is payable are we clear everyone these two points please be very careful the second one and the third one. Okay. Now, everyone, you go on the road. On the road, when you are going, toll charges will be there. Yes. Toll charges will be there. No. GST. Everyone, services by way of access to road or a bridge on payment of toll or annuity is always exempt. Now, over here, one clarification has come. I'll tell you, you'll, you'll understand. When you are going on the toll booth, they will go ahead and if you don't have a fast tag, they collect double amount from you. Yes. Or might be if an overloaded truck is going, they go ahead and take overloading charges, etc. They have gone ahead and told all these double charges which are being taken when fast tag is not there with a vehicle. All these are also toll charges and it will be exempted. Everyone remember, whether it is normal toll charge or higher toll charges because you don't have fast tag, both ka case mate is toll charges and it shall be always exempted. This is one clarification which I have gone ahead and told you. Now next one over here. Sir, you know electricity transmission and distribution. Your home may electricity is distributed. Baba, on, in that scenario, whenever transmission and distribution of electricity is done, there is no GST. The next one over here. The next one over here is circular. Baba, you know what? This BESCOM, our electricity distribution utility who is there, they are going ahead and distributing electricity. There is no GST. They are distributing electricity. There is no GST. But sir, but sir, if they are going ahead, that you told, please shift the meter. My meter has got some problem. Change the meter. They went ahead and gave you some extra service, which is not distribution of electricity. Then they will charge GST. Are we clear, everyone? Next. Sir, I went ahead and gave someone loans in advance and I received interest. Baba, that is always exempt. Giving of money to use and taking interest or discount is always exempt. But then they went ahead and told, sir, interest on loans in advance is exempt. And forex conversion between bank to bank, Bank is giving dollar and another bank is giving INR. Forex conversion between bank to bank or bank and dealer to bank is always exempt. But remember one thing, interest in credit card service. Everyone, interest in credit card service is taxable. Chalo. The next one over here is services to saving bank account holder under Pradhan Mantri Jandan Yojana. Under Pradhan Mantri Jandan Yojana, zero balance account was opened. Supposingly, you opened a zero balance account. Now, just imagine zero balance account and they are charging you 200 rupees uh, debit card charges. For an example, on 200 rupees GST also. So, government went ahead and told, don't charge any GST. Those people who are holding Pradhan Mantri Jandan Yojana can under saving bank account holders. Are we clear, everyone? Next. Now you went to you came to my shop. I went ahead and swiped your card. Okay, everyone. Now if the transaction is only up to 2000 rupees, my bank who is there, my bank who is there, they will go ahead and collect some charges from me because I have gone ahead and used your 
you have gone ahead and given me your card, I swiped your card, now my bank will go ahead and charge me some amount for swiping the card. On that card charges, they will not go ahead and charge GST because that amount of swipe is only up to 2000 rupees. The next one, services by way of collection of contribution under the Atal Pension Yojana or any state government pension Yojana which is there, pension scheme of the state government, under that if any collection charges are taken for collection of pension, there will be no GST. The next one over here is, do you remember business facilitator, business correspondent? Baba, business facilitator and business correspondent ka services or their intermediary ka services to banking company or insurance company, basically, business facilitator or business correspondent to banking company or insurance company with respect to rural area branch will always be exempt. Even their intermediary ka services will be exempt. Remember, rural area ke government is going ahead and telling we want to promote banking and insurance services and hence there will be no GST on the business facilitator and business, business correspondent ka service. See, Baba, my throat is down. It's not your throat is down. Correct? You guys can talk. Baba, you have to talk and enjoy the class. Can we go ahead, everyone? Yes, everyone over here now. This is intermediary service. Intermediary service means broker type of services. By whom? Of financial services means financial services related. There is an intermediary. He is located in a multi-services SEZ with IFSC status. His status is what? IFSC. And he is giving services to customers outside India. Then his services are also exempt. Everyone over here. Upfront amount payable. Baba, you know what? There is State Industrial Development Corporation, SIDC. Okay, everyone. Now, what SIDC will go ahead and do? Supposingly, he wants to set up a plant. He went ahead and told, I want an industrial plot. So, Baba, SIDC will go ahead and give you a plot. Are we clear? This plot of land will be given to you on lease. Are we clear? Might be 30 years, etc. More than 30 years. Long term lease rate will be given. And from you, SIDC will go ahead and collect an upfront amount. Might be 50 lakh rupees, 1 crore rupees. Okay, everyone? So, SIDC is going ahead and giving you a service. Giving you long term lease pay what? Land? Yes or no? And they are going ahead and collecting from you 50 lakh rupees, 1 crore rupees, etc. This upfront amount which is being collected, on that there will be no... GST. Are we clear everyone? Now, one thing I will go ahead and tell you a clarification, which might be you don't have it. Okay? They have not gone ahead and told for you, but you can remember. Now, what happens? SIDC, you know, these industrial plots which are given. Now, industrial plot is here also. And industrial plot is on the main road also. Now, main road pay when industrial plots are there, those are... One second everyone. Everyone over here now. Everyone listen. Now, here what happens? These industrial plots which are there, no? One will be near the main road. One will be behind. If behind wala is there, rate will be less. Main road wala industrial plot, the rate will be high. Now they go ahead and charge uh, premium location charges. Correct or not? SIDC will charge from you 50 lakh for this plot. If you take this plot, 1 crore for an example. Government told whatever it is, upfront amount which is charged, GST will not be there. Whether it is for premium location charges, 20 lakh charged extra by SIDC, that is also exempt. Remember one thing over here. At CA final level, important, intermediate, not important. But still, if I went ahead and gave monthly rent, Baba, monthly rent pay GST will come. What is exempt is the lump sum amount which is given when they go ahead and allocate you the land. Lump sum amount is exempt. Upfront amount means the lump sum amount. Can I go ahead everyone? So look, let's go ahead. Everyone over here. Now, this is TDR or FSI. Baba, transfer of services by way of transfer of development, right? Floor space index up, um, or upfront amount payable in respect of services by grant of long term lease of 30 years or more on or after 1-4-2019 for construction of what? Residential Residential apartment by a promoter. So whenever somebody is going ahead and giving long term lease pay, land or they are going ahead and giving what? Floor space index or they are going ahead and giving development right to me and I am going to make an apartment on that. Everyone listen to me very carefully. When I am going to make an apartment on that. Huh, okay, I am going to make some apartment on that. Then that development right etc. I have to pay GST under. RCM. Now listen to me very carefully. That GST has to be paid under RCM if I go ahead and sell all the flat after completion certificate because that time on selling the flat there is no GST. So development rights pay GST will come. You getting my point? But if I go ahead and sell all the flats supposingly before completion certificate or first occupancy, selling all of the flat pay GST will come. So government will exempt that transfer of development right. For that GST need not be paid under RCM. Did you guys get my point? If selling the flats after GST will not come. So, development right pay GST has to be paid under RCM. Sir, if the flats are sold before selling of the flats pay GST will come, development right pay GST will be exempted. That is what is being told over here. Not important at your level, but still I went ahead and told you because it's there. Everyone over here. Now, incubator and incubator services. Baba, you guys remember incubator and incubating? 
इनक्यूबेटर टेक्नोलॉजी बिजनेस इनक्यूबेटर बाबा हु इज एन इनक्यूबेटर बाबा द द पर्सन हु गिव द वॉम टू द एग basically startup startups are there startups ke liye there will be an incubator who will help the startups to grow correct everyone now they are telling all these startups ko to grow there will be incubators who will go ahead and provide services to the startup so that the startup can grow now incubator ka services provided by a technology business incubator they recognize science and technology enterprise park or a bio incubator baba which which incubator ka services are exempted technology business not all incubators i am also an incubator i am helping some companies for example no we are talking about technology business incubator science and technology enterprise people with me science and technology enterprise park bio incubator when they are going ahead and providing services their services will be exempt yeah. now they are providing services to the startup government went ahead and told we'll help the startups also now all these startups who are there they are also going ahead and providing services to the outside world startups ka services who are under this basically if there is a services provided by an incubate incubate means the startup within the premises they are located within the premises of technology business incubator or they are located within the premises of science and technology park and up to rupees 50 lakh in a financial year their services will be exempt but only for the first 3 years and remember one thing supposingly in the second year their turnover cross 50 lakh then the next year exemption will not be there everyone over here services what is the problem chalo Huh. the next one over here is services by way of collection of news i am an independent journalist i will collect news and sell to so, baba selling of news by an independent journalist or press trust of india or united news of india their services are also exempted the next one is services by organizer to any person for business exhibition held outside india i am an organizer of a business exhibition which is going to be held outside india my services will always be exempted the next one is services by sponsorship by way of sponsorship or sporting event organized by national sports federation indian universities or inter university state board they are going ahead and taking any amount and providing sponsorship services baba who is going ahead and providing who is organizing organizers are national sports federation indian university or inter university sports board and they are going ahead and taking money and giving sponsorship service that okay in your name the whole event will be there you give this much money their services will be always exam the next one is slaughtering of animal government told slaughtering of animal pay gst will come earlier it was exempted now gst is there this point is important for exam services provided by 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 if there is a foreign diplomat mission in india and he is giving service his service is exempt if anyone is giving him service then it is gst is payable they will tell you in the exam services provided to foreign diplomat mission students will see only foreign diplomat mission you have to see only by is exam services provided to foreign diplomat mission is always taxable the next is serv <coughs> services of providing information under right to information act baba you can go ahead and apply your copies etc correct you go ahead and file our rti correct rti may they go ahead and charge you 10 rupees 20 rupees etc on that there is no gst the next one over here on the right hand side services provided to a recognized sports body baba recognized sports body go supposingly any recognized sports body is there and player is providing services referee is providing services umpire is providing services coach is providing services team managers are providing services or one recognized sports body is providing to another recognized sports body that services will always be exempted now everyone remember one thing over here selectator commentator all these people ka services are always taxable what is exempt is only player referee umpire coach and team manager or one recognized sports body to another recognized sports body the next is services by a non profit entity registered to its own member baba one non profit entity is there and they have members who are there non profit entity providing services to a members is exempt provided by way of reimbursement of charges or share of contribution now supposingly there is a trade union which is there baba the trade unions do what they go ahead and provide their services to the member trade union needs money trade union needs money so they will go ahead and collect what trade union needs money so trade union will go ahead and collect money from their members now when they are going ahead and collecting money from their members as a trade union they will not go ahead and charge any members are separate person other than individual and member any activity between them section number 71 a it's a supply but government went ahead and told there will be no gst the next one over here is if there is a non profit entity and it is providing services to its member and collecting contribution for carrying out 
an activity which is exempt. Baba, supposingly, I am a non-profit entity. I am going ahead and doing those services which are exempt only and collecting money from my members. Then my services to my members will always be exempt. The next one is, sir, if I am going ahead and collecting up to 7,500 per month per member, then also it is exempt. Everyone over here, per month per member for sourcing of goods or service from a third person for the common use of the member in a housing society. Everyone, I would like to tell you guys this. Listen, <coughs> supposingly, there is one resident welfare association which we have gone ahead and created. Okay, everyone, resident welfare association is again a non-profit association, you think. Okay, everyone, now what will happen? They go ahead and provide services to the member. There are 10 flats in an apartment. Okay, everyone, so in apartment ka maintenance ke liye, from all the people, money will be collected, everyone? Yes or no? Don't you think the Resident Welfare Association is a separate entity and all the members are a separate entity? From them, when 7,500 per month per flat will be taken, then DST will not come because they are baba, common area maintenance, swimming pool ka maintenance, all this maintenance ke liye money is collected. Yes or no? From a housing society or uh, association ka people say. Now here, their services, uh, resident welfare association ka services to the member and from the member when 7,500 is taken will be always exempt. Are we clear? Now relating to this, lot of uh, doubts were there, so government went ahead and clarified. Government, say so people went ahead and asked. One minute, people. Uh, government say people went ahead and asked some questions and government went ahead and clarified. Government went ahead and told if supply of service is done by whom? Resident Welfare Association to its member up to 7,500 per month per member are always exempt. Everyone, services given by the association per month 7,500 per month per member is always exempt. The second question, ke liye also they clarified, RWA will pay GST when? Supposingly. Supposingly, tell me one thing. There are 10 flats in this apartment. People listen to me very carefully. There are 10 flats in this apartment. Association is collecting 10,000 rupees per month per member. Will GST come? I think about it now. 10 apartment, 10 apartment into 10,000 per person is 1 lakh rupees per month. 1 lakh into 12 lakh, 12 months is 12 lakh rupees per annum. Is it ever crossing the 20 lakh limit? When you are not crossing 20 lakh limit only, even if you are charging 10,000, why will you charge? GST. Are you guys able to understand? Always remember one thing. First of all, RWA ka aggregate turnover should have crossed 20 lakh or 10 lakh in special category state. Those M square and T. Then they will take registration. Correct? And only once they are registered, if they go ahead and charge more than 7,500, then GST will come. Are you guys able to understand? Now tell me, if they are registered and they are charging 7,500, will GST come? No. Did you guys understand this point, everyone? Yes, sir. Chalo, let's go ahead. Everyone over here now. See, RWA is required to pay GST only if such subscription is more than 7,500 per month per member and aggregate turnover or RWA by way of supply of service and supply of goods, basically when they are going ahead and giving services to the member or any goods to the member is greater than 20 lakh and M square and Tika case may 10 lakh rupees. The next one over here is, now everyone over here, RWA is going ahead and providing services to the member. Listen to me very carefully. For an example, RWA is going ahead and providing services to the member and for providing the services, might be it's going ahead and charging more than 7,500 and it is charging GST to its member. Then people went ahead and asked, can they go ahead and take input tax credit? Are when you are going ahead and charging GST, then yes, you can go ahead and take input tax credit. Are we clear everyone? Now, uh, RWA to provide the services to the member, whatever inputs they buy, generator, might be taps, etc., tube lights, etc., they will be able to take all the inputs. Can I go ahead and provide it? They charge GST. Output is there, input will be available. Can I go ahead everyone? People, what? Yes, Chalo, everyone over here now. RWA is entitled to take ITC on capital goods, goods and services. Provide it. Output tax is there. The next one is, sir, supposingly, tell me one thing. I have a flat in this apartment, one flat and two flat. Means I am going ahead and paying 7,500 into two is 15,000 rupees. Correct or not? Now, people went ahead and asked, sir, RW is providing the service and we are paying 15,000 for two flat. It means it is more than 7,500. Government went ahead and told 7,500 per flat has to be seen, not per person wise. Are we clear everyone? Can I go ahead? Now again people went ahead and asked, supposingly RWA went ahead and charged 8,000 rupees to one person. Everyone, how much they charge? 8,000. Will GST come on 8,000 uh, minus 7,500 only on 500 or complete 8,000? Complete 8,000. Baba story is over. Quickly read this. See over here. 
Ceiling limit of 7,500 is applicable per month per member shall be applied separately for each apartment. And if amount exceeds 7,500, GST shall be payable on entire amount. I went ahead and told this because I feel this is a good thing to ask in the exam. Everyone over here now. Now, everyone over here. Now, again, if there is a non-profit entity, non-profit entity, and it is engaged in activities for welfare of industrial agricultural labor, farmer, promotion of trade, commerce, industry, agriculture, art, science, literature, culture, sports, education, social welfare, charitable activity and protection of environment and it is providing services to its own member and it is taking membership fees up to 1000 per annum per member then also it shall be always exempted. Can we go ahead everyone? The next one over here is sir Services by way of pure labor contract. Everyone listen to me very carefully. Supposingly, I am a person whom government have gone ahead and given. Pradhan Mantri Awas Yojana Me. I got 2 lakh rupees from the government to make my own home. Thik hai? Now, to make the home, I will hire laborers or I will tell one person, I supply me laborers. Now, that person who is supplying me laborers, because I am a person who has received financial assistance under the Pradhan Mantri Awas Yojana, Government is telling, hey, don't charge him any GST. So, Baba, pure labor contract of construction, erection, commissioning, etc. Basically, might be it is repair or it is a new home which I am making. Repair or it's a new home pertaining to beneficiary-led individual housing construction enhancement under the Housing for All Mission or Pradhan Mantri Awas Yojana. Then I am being given, I am being given financial support by the government. Now, when I will hire, I will tell one person to provide me laborers. He will not go ahead and charge me any GST. Can I? Otherwise, home will become expensive. Correct or not? The next one over here. Now, I went ahead and told I did not get any support from the government. Okay. I did not get any support from the government, but I'm building my own home. Now, to build my own home, not repair, own home new. I'm making construction of a new home. And I went ahead and told one labor contractor to provide me laborers. He will not go ahead and charge me any GST if it is a single residential house. Are we clear, everyone? Next. So, it's a pure labor contract of construction, erection, commissioning of original work. Baba, remember, under the Pradhan Mantri Awas Yojana, when I told you it's repair also and original means new work also. Can I go ahead, everyone? But here it is only original work for single residential unit. Sir, what is a single residential unit where there is one meter? One, one family means one meter. Can I go ahead, everyone? The next one over here is Baba, one rupee, two rupee ka toilet. They will not go ahead and charge you any GST. Then public libraries, public libraries, government is selling people on our desk, not going, let's support by not going ahead and having any GST on public libraries. Are we all clear till here? Now, everyone, listen to me very carefully. This is one point over here. Tour operator ka service. Everyone, listen to me very carefully. Tour operator ka service. Now, you tell me one thing. Supposingly, I am a tour operator. I am a tour operator. I went ahead and organized a tour for a person who is from US. Who is from the US. Now, if I went ahead and organized a tour for him, two days in India, three days in Nepal, how many days is he going to, uh, how many days is the tour in India? Remember, it's an amendment. Okay, everyone. Now, tour operator ka service. I am a tour operator. Tour operator. And I went ahead and pro organize one tour for a person supposing this is a us ka citizen okay he told ramesh i i will go ahead and pay you one lakh rupees he paid me how much i gave him my service he paid me how much one lakh my tour operator ka services ke liye, how much did i charge one lakh will one lakh with gst come as of now as of now you will go ahead and say yes sir but sir supposingly he is going to be in india two days and three days in nepal how many days in india tour in india is two days and uh, nepal is three days can you tell me how much of my services relates to India? Two days. So, 1 lakh say 40,000 is for India. 60,000 related services. Baba, I am going ahead and organizing the tour for him and I have charged him 1 lakh. 1 lakh say 2 days ka tour is in India. Okay, I will do one thing. 3 days in India, 2 days in Nepal. Can you tell me first of all? So, India related is 60,000. I will go ahead and charge GST. And 40,000 is related to Nepal for which I will not go ahead and charge any GST. So, 60,000 ke I'll charge GST, 40,000 will be exempted, which is what we are going ahead and understanding over here. Listen, tour operator service, which is partly in India and partly outside India, supplied by a tour operator to a foreign tourist. Remember, tour operator to a foreign tourist. Okay, everyone, to the extent of value of tour, which is performed outside India will be exempt. Which will be exempt, everyone? <laughs> Means 40,000 or 60,000? And India may 60,000 per GST will come. Are we clear everyone? Can I go ahead and change the example for you guys now? Now everyone listen to me very carefully. In the next example, I am going to make it. 
I am actually going to make it two days India and okay, three days Nepal. Now, now tell me everyone, two days India and three days Nepal. Tell me quickly, 40,000 and 60,000 ka exemption, right? But government went ahead and told, government went ahead and told over here, see, proviso, value of the tour operator service performed outside India shall be such proportion to the total consideration, such proportion to the total consideration charged for the entire tour, which is equal to the proportion which the number of days for which the tour is performed outside India has to the total number of days. This you understood? Comprising the tour. Or, sir, what will be exempt? Or 50% of the total consideration for the entire tour, whichever is less. People, how much did I charge for the entire tour? 1 lakh. So, exemption will be 60,000 or 1 lakh of 50%, which is 50,000, which is less. So, 50,000 is the less amount. So, exemption will be available only up to 50,000. It means remaining 50,000 I have to charge GST. Did you guys understand this point, everyone? Can I go ahead, everyone? Sure, got it. Pakka. Chalo, let's go ahead. Everyone over here, in the amendment booklet, you will be able to see this. In your amendment booklet, if you have the amendment booklet, sir, if you don't have, go to ramesoni.com, free resources, free resources, may, may 20 folder, may, you'll find it. People over here, you would have anyways got it. Right, everyone? Everyone over here now. Listen. So, tour operator ka service I told you over here. I went ahead and told you about this also. That, sir, if it is 60,000, three days in Nepal is 60,000, correct? But it will be limited. Maximum exemption will be how much? 50% of the value. Are we clear, everyone? Can I go ahead? Now, always remember one thing over here. Provided that in making the above calculation, any duration of time equal to or exceeding 12 hours shall be considered as one full day. Means if it is more than 12 hours, one full day or any duration of time less than 12 hours shall be taken as half day. Are we clear everyone? Can we go ahead? Sir, foreign tourist means any person who is coming on a tour to India, not to migrate into India, is coming to on a tour to India. Now listen, this example I gave, this example I gave, I'll give you the last example. For an example, 2.5 days in India. Tell me everyone, now you tell me, okay? I will understand if you understood it or not. 2.5 days in India. 2.5 days means 2 hours, 2, two, day, two days, 12 hours. Are we clear? If it is, Baba, 2.5 means they are telling 2 days, 12 hours. Okay. 2 days, 5 hours, they would have told. No. Still, it is what? 2.5. 5, they are telling 2.5 days. They are not telling 2 days, 5 hours. Even if they would have told 2 days, 5 hours, then also it is 2. Point. And 3. Point. And 3.5 days here. Okay, one minute. What is the question over here? Okay, three days in Nepal. Everyone, three days in Nepal and 2.5 days in India. Can you tell me, everyone, how much will be the exemption? Then I will understand that you understood. Quickly tell me. People watching at home, quick, 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 quickly tell me, everyone. Quick, 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 everyone. Calculator, calculator, calculator. People, 2.5 days means how much? Two, this 1 lakh, 1 lakh divided by 5.5 days. How much is coming over here into 2.5? 4, 5? 4, 5? 5. Okay, and here how much? 5, 4? 5, 4? 4, 4? 5. Okay, okay, listen, listen. But then, this will be exempt? This is Nepal related, right? But the exemption can be maximum 50,000. So, can you tell me exemption is only 50,000. Remaining, how much will be taxable? 50,000 per GST will be payable. Did you guys understand this point? Baba, this would have been exempt. But government limited the exemption only to 50% of the total amount charged. And the exemption will only be 50,000. And remaining 50,000 per GST will come. Everyone, see over here. Now, this is 54545 should have been exempted. But, sir, 50% is only 50,000. Hence, the exemption will be how much? 50,000. And remaining taxable will be 50,000. Did you guys get it, everyone? We are done with our miscellaneous provision ka chart over here. Congratulations, people. Done. Everyone over here, listen to me very carefully. Everyone over here now. Now, listen. After this, I have gone ahead and given some clarification in your amendment booklet. I have given some clarifications in your amendment booklet. I will go ahead and quickly run through. 
Listen, do you remember when I was explaining your educational institution, I went ahead and told you, when you go ahead and charge from your prospective student, entrance fees, exempt or taxable? Yes. Exempt. Sir, you are going ahead and charging eligibility certificate ke liye charges from your student. Exempt. They are not a student, prospective, but still exempt. Migration certificate fees? Exempt. exempt. Can I go ahead, everyone? Now, the next one over here is, sir, toll charges may, any additional toll charges taken? Still exempt. Still exempt. Right, everyone? This is one. This is Two, okay. It is it has come as three, but it will be two. Can I go ahead, everyone? Next, the third one over here is Baba. Tell me one thing. You know, IVF technology is there. IVF technology is used for going ahead and curing any illness, abnormality, or you go ahead and call anything treatment for what? Pregnancy. Diagnose, treatment, and care for pregnancy is IVF. Correct or not? So taxable or exempt? Exempt or not? Baba. Earlier also it was exempt. There was a lot of debate happening. Government clarified it is exempt. It is. Treatment for what? Pregnancy and hence exempt. Can we go ahead everyone? People who are smart will write in their chart book only in the respective chart. Healthcare wala chart. IVF technology is exempt. Write down in your chart only. In your healthcare ka chart, write IVF technology is exempt. You know what? Before jumping inside the exam hall, early morning you will sit and see the charts only. So chart me everything has to be written. Can I go ahead everyone? Next, everyone over here. Tell me one thing. Do you remember? Do you remember I went ahead and told you if a company goes ahead, if a company goes ahead, done writing everyone. IVF technology is exempt. You can go ahead and write in your chart, chart, healthcare wala chart. Can I go ahead everyone? Now, everyone over here, do you remember I went ahead and told about this hiring of vehicle for transportation of employees? If I, you went ahead and gave me on hire vehicle, is it exempt or taxable? It is not transport. It is not transportation of passenger. When you go ahead and give me your con uh, when you go ahead and give me your contract carriage on hire, is it taxable or exempt? Taxable. Are we clear, everyone? It is not transportation of passenger. It shall be taxable. Can I go ahead, everyone? The next one over here. You remember ferry, ferry, ferry? Are ferry? Yes, sir. Do it now. Everyone, tell me one thing. <sighs> okay, listen. Whether transport, you know what, actually, you can see over here, when you see over here, you will be able to see 1, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Actually, there were 10 exemptions which were there. Take that is applicable for CA final. Now, 2, 3 were deleted. So, I went ahead and deleted 2, 3 of you, 2, 3 of them for you guys. Because it was not applicable for you guys. Are we clear, everyone? And hence, you will be able to see after 8, it is 10. Ninth one is deleted. What is not applicable has been deleted. Can I go ahead, everyone? Are we all clear? Yes, sir. Everyone over here now. You know what? Listen. This is going ahead and telling over here that, sir, whether transportation of mineral within a mining area, say the mining pit to the railway seeding uh, beneficiation plant by vehicle deployed with driver for a duration of time would be covered under entry number 18, which exempt transportation of goods by road by other than by a GTA. Everyone, total bakwas. Listen. You remember individual truck wallas transporting goods is exempt. I went ahead and told you transportation. Hey, everyone. Are transportation of goods. I went ahead and told you transportation of goods by road, by individual truck wala other than GTA is always exempt. Now tell me one thing. You know this uh, mines which are their mines. In mining area what will happen? People will go ahead and give their truck. In a truck one driver will be there. So I went ahead and gave my truck in the mining area so that the truck will go pick up all the coal, etc. Take, put it in the truck and then truck will go and the train will be there, no, here. In the train, all the coal, etc. will be put. Are we clear? Now, people went ahead and asked, Sir, is it, uh, is it services of transportation of goods by individual truck wallas? Will it be exempt? Government told me, you have gone ahead and given your truck on hire. Giving of truck on hire is not exempt. Simple or not? Baba, you went ahead and gave, it, gave your trucks to the mining area. Is it exempt? You are telling, sir, it is transportation of goods by individual truck wallas. Other than GTA, if anyone is transporting goods, it is exempt. Government told, this is not exempt. Can I go ahead, everyone? The next one over here. Sir, you know, in the TV, they went ahead and called me. Ramesh, sir, you come. I went over there as a guest. Okay, everyone? They went ahead and told me, Ramesh, sir, we'll give you 1,000 rupees because you have come, to, come, come on a debate in the TV. Okay, everyone? I went over there as a guest. As a guest or might be an anchor, whatever it is. And they give me 1,000 rupees. Is it exempt or taxable? Taxable. If I am a registered person, I will charge the GST. If I am not a registered person, I, 
Have you read that RCM anywhere? Have you read? The, if it is not RCM, then it's always FCM, unless exempt. Is it exempt anywhere? Is RCM anywhere? Forward charge, pay GST, that's all. Are we clear, everyone? Can we go ahead? See, if it is RCM, then RCM. If it is not RCM, then always forward charge, unless exempted. Remember, are we all clear till here, everyone? I'll close my discussion on the chapter of exemption. People, remember, A graded exemption is, for your exam purpose, A plus graded, I will say, 4 to 6 mark, they will ask, 1, 4 mark a question, 1, 2 mark a small MCQ. Please be very careful. Sir, first, first charge, how will you classify this? I will tell this a B graded chart, but exam amendment, please take care, okay? The next one, I will go ahead and tell again this is a B graded chart, but amendments you should take care. Amendments are A graded over here. Can you see the amendments, everyone? Please mark it, okay? The third one, everyone. Am I fast or you are able to mark it? Marking it, everyone. The third chart is A plus. Very short, there will be a small question because there are a lot of small, small amendments over here. Can I go ahead, everyone? The next one, this one, total bakwas, C graded. Not bakwas, don't leave and go. Next, everyone over here, agriculture, one, two mark a point can come. Please be careful about it. One or two amendments I have gone ahead and told you. I can go ahead and classify it as B graded, but still, please see and go. Everyone, this is A graded chart. This is A graded chart. Your healthcare, please write over here. IVF technology for pregnancy, correct or not, is also exempt. The next one over here, everyone, this is okay, C graded. But here only one line has to be remembered by you. Business and DD whose last checker turnover is more than registration limit, only then RCM. Otherwise, always exam done. Education ka chart, Baba B graded, B graded. Thik hai? This one, C graded. And the last one, sir, I will call this as A graded because a lot of small, small amendment, 100% two marks will come from here. Are we all clear, everyone? Please remember, a lot of small, small changes in the chapter of exemption. I believe if you read all the amendments also and go, 3-4 marks will 100% come from the amendments. Are we clear, everyone? I'll close all my discussion on the chapter of exemption. Congratulations, people. Done.